3 again. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. All right, so this is, <clears throat> obviously we have a life because we're talking and we're breathing and everything. But the estimation of the Father and the estimation of the Son and the estimation of the Holy Spirit is really all that matters. And there needs to come a day where uh, that becomes our estimation, that we're not um, proud over things in the earth that we have or, and we're not um, um, defeated, as it were, whatever word you want to use, over the things we don't have, but that our estimation is not based on those things at all anyway, that our estimation is drawn from the very heart of eternity itself, of, of the Lord and, and the Father. <clears throat> and um, so, so the goal here, Jesus, Jesus fed them in the same sixth chapter. He fed the, the multitudes. And they were so happy, and they were so fed, and they were so satisfied, and they had gained so much. Uh, you know, and they had more over than what they could even eat. In other words, the, the heart of the Lord satisfies beyond even what you could use up. And that's because the sun, the sun is that satisfaction beyond what we could ever use up that, that satisfies the Father. It's beyond, I mean, we'll, throughout the eternal ages to come, be learning of Christ uh, in the Lamb of God in this manner <clears throat> and as sons of God. And so, um, uh, verse, um, oh, and, and verse 53 also, it starts with accept. Now, how important is it that except, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom? How important is that? Well, it's everything. I mean, as far as getting into, into the Lord, you must be born again. Except you be born again. Okay, well, this is another except, and it is, uh, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. So you see, see how that is relating again to, you know, this, this poor place, we're down. We're down to an egg. And the yolk is on me. Anyway, the Son. The Son. Um, you know, y'all, oh, this isn't the one. Okay. The ones that I ordered or asked that we get have little faces on them that smile at you. Y'all remember that? that? That's the ones that I have. Okay. We'll go with this. Bring it up here. Thank you, Jim. You are, you know, you know, I've never really told you this, but Jim, you are a Jim. J-I-M, you are a J-I-M. Okay, anyway. G-E-M. Okay, so this is, this is my version. This is the one I, I wanted. And it's got green. Okay, I forgot what I was going to draw now. <laughs> That's real good there, <laughs> Brother Randy. Uh, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. Okay, so there it is. Uh, the Son of Man. It's still the Son, and it's always identified in the Son, but it's the Son in the flesh. It's the Son in selfless giving manifestation, manifesting the desire of the Father through his actions, manifesting a spirit that, that only a Son and manifest, okay, so we have to be in that sun, and we have to, um, we have to uh, eat the flesh of that one so that it becomes just as real, uh, can I say it like this, just as incarnate as he was, made flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Okay, so uh, verse um, 54, he who eateth my flesh, so that sounds, um, uh, what is the word? It sounds like that's up to your free will, he who eateth. In other words, it's not just across the board, everybody, this, you know, it's those who do this. 
Um, and so let me ask you this, is it possible to be saved, to truly be saved, to truly love Jesus, to truly you know, be about Christian things, um, and yet uh, not have really eaten his flesh and drank his blood in the spirit and in the sense of what he meant? Is it possible to do that? Yes. And this proves it because Jesus is reaching out to the he who will do this. He, see, this kind of stuff is not, well, this is Christian stuff. You need to do that. Do you understand that? Because of the, remember the, the thing that we drew with the Father and the Son that was eternal. Um, father's a little lopsided because I'm doing this backhanded. Uh, because this relationship is eternal, then um, uh, he's not, he's not, forcing us to move into that but that relationship is based on life between them and therefore you can't do that by just your life and then his life the two don't meet it has to be his life in you it has to be the son okay because why because you're not a son apart from christ you see that you're only a son in Christ and by Christ. All right. So he who um, eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And notice the ETH at the end of both eateth and drinketh, which in the Greek means what? A continuing process. It's not a one-time event. This is that you are, you are, I was going to say you've swallowed this, this concept and it's become life in you it's become life in you and from it flows this spirit that is him all right so he who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood that means he that continually does this hath eternal life okay so there it is this isn't christian life this is eternal life and most Christians talk about eternal life. Well, one day when I'm dead and gone, I'll have eternal life, you know. Or eternal life is me getting saved and now I'm going to live forever, as if the people that are not saved aren't going to live forever also. I mean, if you're talking about distance, <laughs> they're all going to go the same distance. The difference is location. Did you all get that? <laughs> okay. Um, he who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Okay, so this is, you know, um, you know, people can argue with me over this, but I believe the last day ultimately is this day. You don't have to believe that, but I believe the last day is the cross because that ended our life and began his life in us for those who, for whosoever will. So, uh, and it kind of says, I, you know, that the resurrection will happen at the last day. And so we always refer to the resurrection of the body. But the last day is the day that we all died with Christ and then he rose from the dead. Um, you don't, again, you don't have to believe the way I believe. On, there's a lot of stuff. I, I say that, you know, it's my perspective. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to believe that kind of stuff. Okay, verse 54, he who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Um, and this raising up, let's see, I think I, I thought I addressed that. Okay, so let's go to the next verse. For my flesh is, is food indeed, is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Okay, so, there, so I in you and you in me, this is, this is defining Jesus' words that are used a lot. You know, I'm the vine, you the branches, abide in me and I in you. Uh, what is it, 524 or something like that anyway, where it says that that day you shall know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. 
Uh, and this is a common phrase, and Paul uses it um, a fair amount also. This, uh, but this is taking I in you and you in me to another stage. It is not theology. It's not, because he said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, then I will dwell in you and you and me. This is a, an actual comprehending, and I'm going to say it like this, an actual comprehending of what Jesus meant. I can sit up here, or stand up here and tell you all day long what I think that means. And, and if I was right on and perfect with my definition of what Jesus meant, it still has no life unless you see that and have entered into that. And to do that, and here's the kicker, is you realize, I mean, here Jesus is saying this, and remember, this gets, this gets rave reviews, right, afterwards? No, everybody walks off and is upset with him and whatever. Um, you have to... You can't even do this unless you comprehend who it is that God sent, which we're going to see in the next verse. But more importantly, to see who it is is to see that he's broken bread or, or torn flesh and, and his blood poured out. That's who he is. And that's who in the next verse it's going to say, that's who God sent. Okay, so you have, to compre you have to comprehend him on some level to even eat that. And Jesus is like the table of the Lord there, and he's the meal of that table. And the vast majority who loved eating uh, the, the miracle bread don't want to hear this. Okay, so what does that mean ultimately? It means they're not going to be I and you and you and me. That's what it means. Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood. You know. So does it mean they're not saved? Well, I don't believe that. You know, I believe we're saved by grace. I don't believe that salvation is based on some deep perception of this or that. But I believe being saved from ourselves is based on that. <laughs> which is maybe the greater salvation. You know? <laughs> okay, so um, I and him and he, verse 57, as the living Father hath sent me, and there it is. There it is. This is the work of God that you believe that the Father sent me. Sent who? Eat my flesh. I'm the bread. I'm the living bread. I am, uh, you know, the broken body and poured out life. Uh, and the living Father sent me this broken bread. See, and again, we're hearkening back to the miracle time. And we're going, oh, he's a prophet. He's a king. He's a miracle worker. He's a this or that. And he's, he's screaming, I, this is me. This is the one God sent. But you have to want me, which there is no beauty that we should desire him. Remember Isaiah 53? There is no beauty that we should desire him. So there has to be something more than desirability. Something that moves our heart. Because we see something that is beautiful in its nature and in its way. See? And see, God, God makes, you know, it's funny. I mean, every, everybody's born to, born to die, right? I don't care if you're born, you know, if you're born, you're going to die. So everybody's born to die, you know. You could just say the whole world and everybody that comes and goes is born to die. And... Um, there is this reality that his life is the only one that's going to continue. We're also born to grow old. And so, you know, um, let's say that there's a really, really beautiful girl. And then as she grows older, she doesn't look so beautiful anymore. But what if she was beautiful because of something other than her outward? You, do you understand what I'm saying? 
And we said, you know, I see beauty beyond what was there for a short time. Well, that's, what, that's why one reason we grow old. We have to grow up. We have to mature. We have to see things beyond the natural, beyond the, the aesthetic, beyond the things that please me. Jesus, Jesus as a slaughtered lamb is beyond the things that please me. Yeah. I'm telling you, when I first was being introduced, I kind of went, I don't know. You know, it's like there is no, you know, there is no beauty that I would desire him. But as the spirit of God began to open my heart to his nature, and that's why he looks that way. He looks that way because he gave himself for you and me. He could have, you know, not be that way, but he's that way strictly, primarily because of that. Um, so then you, you love him more, you know what I mean? <laughs> then you just love him so much more because you go, oh, my God, you're, that's, that's beauty to me. And um, so... Then you begin, as you perceive him, as you see and know him, then you say, I want that in me. And he says, there's a way that can happen. Praise God. I in you. And you but who's I in you? See, we go, Jesus in me. You know, oh, Jesus is in me. The beautiful one. The powerful one. The glorious one. Well, let me tell you, the powerful one disappeared on the cross and he, the weakness of God was shown and he was weaker than men, as it were, in that sense and let men destroy him and crucify him and do all of that. And he did it for us, but it, that was also the way of victory. The very thing that we abhor because we're so surface becomes God's answer becomes the height and yet the height is actually the depth and the lowest um, who will be greatest God's looking for cross people you know what I mean he's looking for lambs he's, fear not little flock for it gives the father good pleasure to give you the kingdom well how are they going to get the kingdom they're going to follow him right through that cross say because they're lambs so um, and then finally, um, well, let's see. Uh, as the living Father hath sent me, so this reference, every time he talks about the Father sending him, and this is the work of God, is this, this one that he sent. And then, and I live, uh, sent me, and I live by the Father, so there it is. I, I'm not living by my own life. If Jesus didn't do it, and he was perfect, what makes us think it's okay for us to do it? Right? I mean, that, you know, and I live by the Father. He's telling you, I'm in him and he's in me. We have this eternal union. And Jesus could say, and guess what? This is the way it's always been. Yeah. And this is the only thing that will outlast everything else. And you go, you know, you, you make a decision like they're going to make at the rest of the scriptures down. Decisions will be made. Decisions will be made. Yes. Um, just to back up a little bit to um, there being no beauty that we will desire him, it's really all bound up in him being revealed because our eyes, you know, look for what pleases them. And right. that's why Jesus is not appealing to us. Right. Ooh, why would we want someone who looks like that? God must not like him very much because look how he looks. Well, well, why would we want that? You know? And that's where the decisions are made. Because when it's revealed, there's the beauty. It's never a beauty that appeals to our emotions or our sensibilities or our pleasure. You know. right. That's where the decisions are made. What kind of beauty is it going to be? That's the beauty that appeals the to us. The decision is made as to what kind of beauty that we can make. Uh, uh, what kind of beauty we would choose. That's what Mallory was just saying. And there, you know, let's face it, that, that, has to, that has to come clean. That has to be pure. That has to be, we have to make that pure decision based on what we perceive as the true beauty, which would be the nature of the lamb. Or we'll make the decision based on aesthetics that we like, the things that please us and whatever. 
But then once that decision has been made, and that reality fills your being that this is the beauty of God, the, the, the crucified, um, it, do, it calls forth. It do, it's not the result of, it doesn't feed, it calls forth emotions of, of you know, tears or, you know, those kind of things. It, it, because it so deeply touches you because this is, you know, and it's so, it's so contrary to nature, to human nature, to fall in love with something like that. It just is. And, but once you see him as he is, then all of those things come easy. So isn't it funny that it really, all of the fulfillment of all the different things really just come down to seeing him as he is. <laughs> I love that. All right, um, finish out this verse and then uh, um, verse 58. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Um, whatever experience Moses and them experienced in the wilderness, no matter how miraculous it was, no, no matter how caring it seemed that God was to them, no matter how much God was seen as a provider. It wasn't Christ to them. It wasn't Christ to them. It wasn't, it wasn't the one. It was about the one. It was a vague shadow and picture of the one. But now before them stands the one. And he says, you know, uh, this is this, this broke and you know he's not just pointing to himself here you do realize that when he says this is how's it word this is that bread which came down from heaven but he's not pointing to himself standing there he's pointing to broken bread he's pointing to pour it out blood and then drink it and that, that's what he's pointing to this this is that Let's see this this Broken bread, this picture that we've been, he's been describing, this is that. That's not that it. This is that. This is what that was meant to signify. And he's pointing to himself in death. Anyway, there's a lot of different places in the scripture that uh, it's good to work out in your mind and ask the Holy Spirit to help you separate that this is that thing. Um, on the day of Pentecost, this is that. They're going, no, this is this. And goes, no, this is that. <laughs> you know, we have to find the reality of it, not the, the supernatural manifestation of it. Can I put it like that? Yes. Okay. And that doesn't, uh, take away the supernatural manifestation. It was still real. It was very real, and there were, there were things to be learned. But you miss. The, who wants to miss the Lord? Who wants to miss the crucified? And you know, experience, you know, great things. Um. So this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. All right, so um, he is showing, he is basically just saying, that's just a picture. That's just a picture. But what I'm describing to you is the Passover. What I'm describing to you was... Uh, why there was a Passover and what really brought you out to bring you in. The thing that took you out was to eat the lamb. This is that bread. 
I'm describing to you. That's what he's saying. All right. So this last part, he says, uh, let's see. Okay. Well, let's go back to verse, um, I think it's verse 30. So this is their response to him, Jesus, talking that way. They said, Therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? All right. So they said, what, what is the work of God that we can do it? Tell us. Jesus says, Believe on broken bre bread and the reality of putting it on the inside of you. That's what he said. This is what I want you to believe in. Their response what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? All right, are they talking about a repeat in the wilderness? Do, do some miracles, show us some stuff that God did then? Yes, look at the next verse. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. All right, so they want a sign. Uh, and they want, and they're really asking not just for a sign, you have to keep it in the context of the verse before it. They are asking for a sign that God sent him. And he's saying, this is what God sent, broken bread. Okay. And they're going, well, give us a sign. <laughs> you remember other places, no sign shall be given you but the sign of Jonah. Three days and three nights, you know, we're going to go back to the cross. Let's keep going to the cross. Let's find our foundation, and then we can branch out from there. But without that, we will misread, misrepresent, and misuse the word of God, the heart of the Lord. See, that, see that's the deal. We go, well, I wouldn't want to be deceived or misuse the word of God. The, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. This is the word of God. This came from his heart. We're not just violating scripture. We're trampling the very heart of God, of the Father, and of the Son, and of their relationship. So, um, they're going, you know, so they, they act like they're wanting to know who God sent, but they're going, show us a miracle like we had before. But still at this stage, they don't know who God sent. They don't know this broken lamb. So verses 32. Uh, <clears throat> verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but who? My Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. All right. So... These verses are showing, again, that what the Father sent, he sent broken bread, not a prophet, not a king. He sent bread, his son, as bread. His, not just his Savior. Remember, this is what you put in you for life. This son will make sons. This is the focus to satisfy the heart of the Father. Isn't that funny? Because we would say, I want to satisfy the heart of the Father so you focus on the Father. But in reality, you have to focus on the Son in whom the, or, or whom God hath sealed to carry this forth. Okay? And then... He will be that. He won't just do it. You won't just get a miracle. You know what I mean? See, I mean, that's the, that's the, the deal here. I started to pick that one. I want this one. So he, you know, it's like, okay, rain manna down on our lives down here in the earth, oh, son of God. Oh, we're, we're, uh, we're very arid in this desert. <laughs> we're very dry in this desert and we need God to provide for our flesh and Jesus is saying I didn't provide for my flesh I let it be torn I let it be broken for you but for you to eat 
take, eat. This was given for you. See? And we go, we're selfishly going, okay, you know, I'll take more stuff. Yeah, let me look up everything that says for you. you know? And we miss the spirit of his heart. So, so um, you know, we're not trying to repeat the Old Testament in the New. We're trying to find, that was the, and it says, that was the shadow. We're trying to find the reality behind all of those things. That's, what we're, that's, that's where our heart is, has to be. And that's only going to be found here with the Father and with the Son. All right, so um, uh, verse, uh, let's see. Let me go back. Let's read verse 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Okay. So there's a contrast here between the fathers and my father. Jesus talking about his father. Y'all see it? The fathers, the fathers, the fathers. My father. Now you're supposed to see something of the heart of the son toward his father. You're supposed to see not a commitment to the traditions of the father. Come on. Not a commitment to the traditions or how it was done before. Or the way somebody else did it. Well, Moses did it this way, and Moses is highly esteemed. And Jesus could say, yeah, you've esteemed him higher than my father. My father was and is and is, you know, will be. Moses was a man for a short period of time. And the experiences that they had were meant to open your eyes and your heart to something beyond the natural, but you were so natural, you made the natural everything. And so you're looking for more the natural. But Jesus wouldn't say, but I want to talk to you of the supernatural because when God did all that stuff, he did it supernaturally. Does that make sense? I mean, he did. It was miracles and stuff like that. Miracle, the miracle of manna falling from the sky every day. Um, but he's not talking, see, to the father, to the son, that, you know, the son doesn't go, oh, my God, father, you're supernatural. To the son, he's just father. I mean, he's just father. You know, that's like, you know, I've seen famous athletes or, or celebrities and their kids, they never saw their movie or really understood statistics how good they were as an athlete or something. It, they were just dad. Well, that's a sad picture, but it's a, a you know, kind of helps us to comprehend that the son knows the father. For, and Jesus says this several times. No man knoweth the father but the son. And so we go, well, he's going to reveal him unto me. Yeah, he's going to reveal him unto you after he takes you to the cross. He, he's not going to just go, well, here's the Father, and now y'all get together and spend time together. Maybe have a little, you know, you know, go watch some sports or something. I don't know. <clears throat> go watch the Seahawks or something. <laughs> so <laughs> he's going, yeah, go, Noah, go. <laughs> um, so uh, this contrast, I mean, it's bigger. This stuff is so much bigger than what we imagine. There has to be an entrance uh, of the father's heart and the view of the father from the son to catch a lot of this stuff because they're going, the fathers, and they're making that a big deal, and they're pressing Jesus to ante up according to what the fathers did. And they're saying, this has been a right path all the way. No, it's, it's been a, sh a shadow path that God gave, but the... But if this doesn't lead, lead to, you know, and you see this in the book of Hebrews, you know, the priest, here's the fulfillment of it. The tabernacle, here's the fulfillment of it. Da, 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 da. Everything's contrasted with Jesus. All that is holy and high and as the best 
of the best is in Hebrews, and then it's contrasted with Jesus himself, and it says, this isn't it, this isn't it, this isn't it, this is it. See? I mean, it could have tore down the world or sin or whatever, and it tears down everything that we held as holy. So when they say, when they say to Jesus, well, the fathers, they got this, and, you know, you know, and this is, this is our standard. Jesus is just going, you know, it's not about the fathers. My father is the one who gave you that in the first place. But he did it in type and shadow because he's going to give, was going to, at that time, going to give me one day, but as broken bread, not just manna that you pick up and go, oh, but broken bread. This is my body. Take, eat. This is my blood. Drink it. But see, that was the Passover meal. Do you realize that? This is the Passover. This is the true Passover. Remember? Verse 4. This is it. This is it. This is it. And he's, he's trying to pass out bread and wine. He's, but he's doing it on the true level. Not a symbolism. Not a ritual. But do this. And always do this in remembrance of my death. No, do this knowing I was broken. I am broken. This is my nature. This is my spirit. This is what God sent to you. This is what he wants you to put inside of you. I don't want to be that way. I want to be a champion. I don't even know what to say to that. I'm sorry I even said that. It just, it just sounds so bad. Yes, Mallory? when he went to Hebrews about um, how the soul gets so enamored with what it can see and so the man in the wilderness is the thing and as you're reading about the Jews Passover in John compared to the true Passover which is what you were sharing in John and the Jews Passover was a thing and the flesh obscures the spiritual reality every time and Jesus yeah. became the flesh that was torn the veil and we enter in through the veil, that is to say, his torn flesh. It, it, it removes the flesh from our view so we can see the truth that Jesus' torn body is the veil. He became the, he became the flesh right. that obscured the reality and it got torn. That's right. And that's how we can ever get past it, or we will never get past it. Never. Yeah. That's it. Well, you know, people, y'all may not agree with me on this. But I believe the Jesus of the Gospels is still just a picture of, you know, they'll tell you that the New Testament didn't begin till Jesus rose from the dead, not in the Gospels. But we've made the Gospel part of the New Testament when in reality, uh, and I can take you through parables, I can take you through actions of Jesus over and over. This is a, this is a perfect example, but, let, but let's take the, you know, gosh, I wish we had another hour. Uh, if we, you know, I, we can take the P Passover Jesus celebrated with his disciples, okay? So he takes it and he says, this is my body. Okay? Well, I thought this was your body, it's, you know, and you're holding bread in your hands. Right? This, he did, but he didn't say, this is my body. He said, this is my body, broken bread, poured out wine. But that wasn't his body either. He's talking about himself on the cross, right? And that body. But he's seeing it in the symbolism right there, see? And, you know, I'm sure I could be strung up for that too, but, you know, my God, the list is so long. Mm -hmm. But I do, I mean, I, I fully believe that it was just as much a shadow in the sense of it was not the fulfillment that we see on the cross. See, and that's why Jesus is going this, but he's really pointing to there. And guess what? It's going to be that same day. Yeah. They're going to come in the garden and take him, and they leave that meeting, go to the garden, and whisk him away. So he would have said to his disciples while he's hanging on the cross, this is what I was talking about. This is my body, but they all ran away but John because they were not looking for that. They didn't understand that. They were discouraged. We thought he had been the one. 
da 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 da. You don't even know. You know, I've told you before, you know, you got Mary there and you got all the different people, the women, and they're before the cross and they're weeping and they're going, oh, you know, this is horrible, this is terrible, and just, a, just this horrible moment in time that, that they're experiencing. And Paul later on catches a glimpse of the meaning of that. And if he was standing there, he would go, this, this, this is it, the greatest moment of all time, the, the victory. And everybody goes, you're an idiot. This man's bleeding to death, <laughs> you know? But that's how he saw it. He saw this, this is the fulfillment. This is the one that we're supposed to know, the crucified. And this, so he starts pinning, you know, the, the weakness of God is greater. Than, he starts writing all that, I am crucified with Christ. He goes, I'm dead, yeah, you know, I'm crucified with Christ. But, you know, everybody's sitting there, he can't get anybody to join in on the party. Because everybody's weeping. This is the worst moment. Paul's saying this is the highest of all moments. So what's the problem? The problem is we haven't seen him. I mean, we, you know, everybody's seen him on to some degree. It's, okay, I'm not saying we're all idiots. I didn't say it. I'm thinking of a man who said it. But what you have of the Lord, you have of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? What you have of the Lord, you have something of the Lord. But don't let that stop you. <laughs> don't let that be your crutch. Don't let that keep you from, from pressing on. And Paul said, I press toward the mark of the prize. He didn't say, I daintily walk through the pansies and the roses on my way to the prize of the high call. I am pressing. And that, that, that speaks of having to use some spiritual muscle. You know, the only way to build muscle is to press against something. And he's pressing towards the mark of the... And he, and he says, not as though I had already attained. Who, uh, who among us has attained? Even close to attained. I mean, anything that I say in light of the fullness of truth will be looked one day, you know, let's just say we all go to heaven, we're all looking down, and, we're all, and, and the Lord, or, or the Lord replays this day, and he says, yeah, he says, hey, I want you all to see this, you know, he plays it, and we'll all go, <laughs> God's, and y'all be, Randy, <laughs> you were so dumb. <laughs> And you know what? I'll be okay because hopefully I've progressed. I've been pressing myself, you know, to want to know Jesus and to, to, to be with him and to be with him in his heart and to be with the Father by Christ in his heart in ways that, that are not theological. Yes. And they're not spelled out. You can't say them perfectly. You'll never be able to say them perfectly. You know, we know in part. You know, and yes, we are seeing fullness, but, we, but we're seeing him who is the fullness, but we're not seeing all the fullness that is him. Mm -hmm. See? And so, you know, I, and I'll tell you this. I mean, I have been, this is just, I'm closing here in a minute, but I, I, um, I have really, 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 really been pressed and really... Uh, having to deal with things and work on things and um, not I, I don't take any breaks hardly and I don't you know this and that and just um, you know at times it's just like whoa this is so much and then I have to prepare for class too and then so so Jim texts me and he goes um, uh, next Sunday you're supposed to preach but Scott said you're also supposed to lead worship <laughs> And I'm going, just shoot me. <laughs> just shoot me. Um, but this morning, I, 
said, I just need to spend time with Jesus, not for this class, not for Sunday, not for da da da. I, I love Jesus. I love the Lord. I love him, and I want to be with him, and I want to know his heart. And I don't want to just know stuff that the Spirit of God can move on that I teach. That's worthless to me. It used to mean something to me, but it's worthless. The only thing that's worth anything is that I am with him, not just that I want to know him, because any academic person could want to know him. You know what I'm saying? I want to be with him in his heart the way that he wants me there. And I want to be with the Father by the Son in the way that he wants me there. And so I just sat down and said, I don't, I don't have time for this and whatever, but everything else, let her all go to Hades, man. I am with the, I'm going to be with the Lord. And, and like I said, when I get just a moment of time to be with him, it's more precious than I can tell you. It is more precious. I am just in a crazy place with the Lord right now, and it's, I just love him. So, so that's, what we, that's where we have to come from. That's, we have to get out of Bible school, and we have to get out of church, and we have to get out of all the concepts that we have that are pretty much of this earth, and they form us, form our minds and our ways and our customs instead of breaking with that and saying, you know, I want to remember the Father and the Son. I want to come up there with you in that reality only for your good pleasure. Well, what do I get out of it? Well, you get the joy of seeing his good pleasure, maybe. <laughs> you know, you get that? Is that okay? And you go, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So let's pray. Father, we just come in Jesus' name and we so long that you be satisfied uh, by your son, with your son, but also with sons in the image of Christ, that we all be conformed to the image of your son. And we don't want that because we know it's high spiritual truth. We want that because that's what you wanted before. That's why you created the earth, Father. And that's why you uh, allowed us to come into existence and it's as if Jesus himself were here speaking to us tonight, saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Take what I am and put it in you. And Father, I hear his voice. I hear the Spirit whispers to us. And it moves us, and not just our emotions, it moves our heart. And, and yes, tears can come to our eyes, even as I have tonight, but I, I want you father and i want you jesus and i ask you to continue to minister by the spirit to all of us in this place for we have we have been knit together by you and joined together for a purpose that is outside of ourselves and for a purpose that is outside of this earth and we we want to be with you in that and we don't want to fall short of that we don't want to we don't want to uh break with that and then just set our course uh, and what we think would please you, but to please you, Father, by the Son, and Jesus, to please you by being the Lamb's wife, not just one with you, but by being the Lamb's wife, your wife as Lamb. So let your spirit continue to flow and Lord, if, if, it's, if, if it's a value at all to anyone else, may what you're doing in me in the little snippets of time that I get, may it flow down to the rest of the body and may it be beneficial to all of us as we are brought to our knees and yet brought to joy and yet tears all at the same time as we are finding you finding you in your hidden ways that you're not going to just open to just anybody. So, Father, let the Spirit of God be loosed in this manner. And let us all stand with one another, holding up one another's arms, believing for one another, rejoicing and, and yet weeping for one another till we all come to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, we're dismissed.